Thank you for staying with us. Uh, it's time now to look at our hot topic for this morning. And uh, we'll be talking about the fact that CBN has sacked boards of Union, Titan, and Keys or Keystone and Polaris banks uh, this morning. And we're being joined by Comrade Mark Adebayo, spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mark. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Good morning, Vias. Okay, now, um, uh, Union, Titan, Keystone, Polaris Bank uh, chiefs have been sacked. We do know that the ministries have, some ministries have more than a hundred and something accounts, and it cannot be all in uh, Union, Titan, Keystone, Polaris Bank uh, that their chiefs have been sacked. But that's not the issue. The issue is, what is your, um, your, your concern in all this issue? We've heard that they are being sacked because of the corruption that is being investigated in some of these ministries. What is your take? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, all of us know that uh, the major abattoirs that Nigeria has been battling with since after independence in 1960, since after flag independence I, mean, I must have, since 1960 has been leadership failure and corruption. And these two align. Because it is leadership failure that we, that dovetails into corruption, humongous corruption that we have been witnessing in this country, and everywhere for as long as corruption continues to be part and parcel of our social political existence as a country, for so long will there be underdevelopment, with backwardness, retrogression, insecurity, unemployment, hunger, and anger in the land, and uh, the kind of humongous corruption that has been unearthed by the Jim Obasi committee, investigative, investigative, investigative committee. It is so saddening. We know that there's corruption in Nigeria, but this one is unprecedented, you know, unprecedented. And it is because of part of the leadership failure syndrome of the Buhari administration. It is only a Buhari, a, a, a lackluster, lackadaisical president like Buhari that will allow a sitting, a sitting CBA government who has become so confident in the wealth he has amassed, allegedly illegally, that he even attempted to contest for the presidency of this country. It has never happened in this country. But within 24 hours, a proactive president will have removed such a CBN governor. And, um, you know, as to why this action is coming now, I think it's a good step in a good direction. Uh, Nigerians will recall that the, report have been, the reports have been submitted since October, some November last year, and I believe the presidency was going through it, and then they are not taking the necessary action uh, about it. Because if you look at the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act 2020, it encapsulates everything that banks are supposed to be doing in terms of following the due process, in terms of corporate governance account and accountability processes that they are supposed to be going through. And now, when the special investigator came out with these damning reports of a sitting central bank governor buying banks, and we are even reading in the report that there is no evidence of paying of payment for the, for those banks. So it is uh, necessary for the government to take the necessary actions immediately to uh, some remedial actions, so re remedial so that there will be confidence in the banking system of Nigeria. Because now you can see that the, the CBN was even in their release last night. Was saying that oh people should not go into panic uh, withdrawals and the rest of that. There must there is a need, and not just need to rebuild, to reinfuse confidence back to the banking system. Because many Nigerians, you will see that some things are happening, especially since the time of those uh, Naira redesign and cashless uh, situation tragedy that happened to Nigerians. People have lost enormous confidence in the banking system of Nigeria. There must be a, there's a need, and not just need to immediately begin to infuse the, uh, you know, confidence, the public confidence back into the system. I'm not even talking about Nigerians now, locally. I'm not, I'm not talking about international business concerns. Locally, that we should have confidence. Many people now have lost confidence in our banking system. You know, the apps are not working as they, they should work. There are disappointment, failed transactions, and the rest of that. Those are the things that are germane to the regular Nigerian that must be addressed, that must be redressed, and must be tackled and resolved with immediate effect. The government must show some kind of uh, proactiveness in, in the area of making sure that we drive cor corruption out of our banking system, we drive inefficiency and underhand dealings out of our banking system. Otherwise, 
even locally, the people themselves will lose total confidence in our banking system, and it will not be good for the for the economy. Okay, so you talked about proactiveness and you know trying to drive corruption away. Now, I, I, I presume that there are agencies that kind of work with these banks to ensure that they're on the right track. So um, one of the reasons why they actually um, um, took out the board of directors, well, they said regulatory non-compliance, corporate governance failure, they were involving yeah. in activities that threaten financial stability. So shouldn't there be agencies that are working hand in hand with the government and these banks to ensure that they're on the right track? Isn't that the best well, way of, you know, moving corruption away? Well, that is part of the collateral tragedy of the Nigerian state. Mm. There are institutions set up to monitor, to implement, to take actions on some of these things. You know, as a matter of fact, to prevent them from, from happening. Crime is best fought when it is prevented. But some of these institutions are also complicit in the corruption enterprises that run Oh, 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 across this country, across, especially across uh, government agencies. They are aware once they are quote and unquote settled, they keep quiet. And in some other disturbing scenarios, you will see that these same agencies, these financial regulatory agencies, will write reports, submit reports to the necessary officials and officers and, uh, you know, people in government to take action. They will not take action. They will not take action because they must submit their report for energy action by the necessary regulatory agencies. When those regulatory, regulatory agencies refuse to take action, then the corruption continues, the looting continues. So that is the pro that is one of the problems that we have. And in this situation, the major regulatory agency for commercial and non-commercial bank, banks in Nigeria is the CBN itself. But when you have a leader, the governor of Central Bank that is supposed to superintend the activities of these banks, that is now the one committing these atrocities. It becomes challenging for other agencies to, to act. But an agency, an anti country agency like the FCC, like the ICPC, is not encumbered to take action in some of these, in some of these situations. They, are, they ought to have moved in on the governor of Central Bank even before he was removed. You know, they tried to do it, but uh, the man used the, uh, uh, the uh, court system to frustrate their efforts at that time. I'm not excusing them because they did, they did not do well. If they have been doing well, if they have been shouting and they have been acting and the rest of that, we will not get to this place. We are talking about trillions of naira by individual, including some of these monies that are trapped abroad now. That they will, it will take a long process before it is it is recovered. We are still on the issue of recovering abashal loot up to now. So you know there is no political will from the presidency down to be able. To fight. I only hope that this one is not a fire brigade approach that uh, it will be targeted, targeted uh, actions that then before you know it, everything goes down. No, it shouldn't be like that. We must have a systemic consistency of anti-corruption, uh, you know, fight. Yeah. It's not, it's not one that we do just do it like we you know, like a fire brigade approach, the Nigerian typical fire brigade approach, and then everybody goes back to to State business as usual. Yes. I hope this will not be like that. I seriously hope so. Yeah. Do you have specific recommendations uh, uh, to be made uh, to make this thing sustainable, so make it consistent and sustainable? Because like you said, if it's a fire brigade approach and in a few days we forget about it, that will not do well. Because it seems as if when that happens, uh, corruption goes, re-strategize, comes back in full, <laughs> in full force, force. With, 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 with an army. So what are the measures you think should be done? or should be put in place to make sure this kind of fight, the, the heat that is being generated now is sustainable? Well, thank you so much. You see, this uh, government, particularly President Bola Tinubu, needs to act in a way to prove his critics wrong mm -hmm. by making sure the anti-corruption movement, I, I don't see it as a fight or a war for now. It's, there's no anti-corruption war. If it was a, a war, Many heirs will have ruled by now because corruption it has permeated, percolated through the whole governance system of, of this country. You see, look, if we have to take it holistically, if you are looking for a government that will fight corruption on a sustainable basis, you are going to need a, a leader with revolutionary mindset. Because Nigeria can no longer afford systemic, methodical development or advancement again in, e in every sector of, of governance system. We need a quantum leap now. We need quantum leap. 
Nigeria is in a hurry for it to get back on track to, of development, of advancement, of, of probably you know, indigenous technological takeoff and economic sanctity and political you know, sagacity that will be able to take us to the promised land. We need a leader with a combination of the sensibilities of Lee Kuan Yew, Nelson Mandela, and uh, Thomas Sankara. But, you know, we need the philosophical depth of a, of a Mandela. We need the proactive sensibility of a Lee Kuan Yew. We need the revolutionary mindset of a Thomas Sankara. We need these three to be compiled in one person for us to get to the promised land. For now, looking at the political firmament of Nigeria of today, including all those people who participated in the 2023 general elections, some of them who are you know, pretending to be to, 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 to be older than thou, I, I, I'm yet to see that kind of leader. And we, we need, you know, everything boils down to leadership, my brother and sister. Every boy, everything boils down to leadership. If the leader, if the president sits on today that no more corruption, and he leads by example, he leads by example, no pro, prolific, profligacy in, in government, there is no over bloated entourage anywhere, there is no uh, uh, over bloated convoy anywhere, and nobody. He's trying to use four billion naira to renovate where one individual we stay because that is also corruption. It is also corruption. You need to lead by example. According to Shino Achebe in his book, 1982, uh, The Trouble with, with Nigeria, it, it, one of the major problems we have, we have been having in Nigeria, is the fact that we do not, we have not been able to, we have not been lucky to have an exemplary leadership that leads by example, not by talk. Not that I will do, I will do, I will do. Nigeria has been living on promissory notes mm. from that visit to date. And we need to change that, that trajectory. We need a revolutionary mindset leader who we, we offer what normal leadership will cover in 20 years, who will cover it in one year. That's it. We need proactivity, we need revolutionary mindset leadership that will be able to aggregate the total, the total amalgam of Nigeria's challenges and lead by example and make sure there's no profligacy in government. You know, we cannot be we cannot be borrowing money and wasting it on, on luxury. We cannot yeah. be borrowing money to sustain our economy. This is an economy that is over 3.5 inflation rate and it is growing at the rate of about 3.1 every quarter. That is too much. We need to find a way to bring down the inflation rate. We need to find a way to strengthen the economy. We need to find a way to push out, to run out corruption from our body, from our body system as a country. We cannot afford to continue on the same way. I expect us to get to the promised land of advancement of, of development. You know, who, who, who used to go to Dubai 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Who used to go to, 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 to the United Arab, Arab Emirates? It's not the same place that has become the mega of software globally that become a global hub of not only of tourism but of business but of uh, also of uh, artificial intelligence technology and all manner of innovations i want such in my country i want that kind of leader in my country forget about politics or opposition or people in government it's not about that it is about our patriotic engagement with a country that must work for all of us it is not about opposition it is not about the uh, people in government it's not everybody in this country today knows that from may 29th that the president precipitately removed the subsidy. Many people have been suffering in this country. There is mass hunger and there is anger. Hopefully, it will positively boil over to the level that we will demand accountability from our, our, our the, the people in government. You know, and it is the responsibility of all of us to make sure that we get it right. Because when people say political class, we don't have political class in this country. Political clique. There, there are people. There is PIP people in power. That PIG people in government, those are the political cliques. All of us, you, journalists, activists, and everybody, we are all members of the political class. But we are not members of the political clique. We are not in decision-making organs of government. The people that are taking decisions that will affect you and me and generations on board are the people that must be born again and make sure they are doing things right for this country. They must learn from history. If they don't learn from history, posterity will judge them. Okay, so you talked about leadership, right? But what are key strategies to be able to drive out corruption because we know corruption has eaten deep into our system almost everywhere you go to someone is corrupt if you go to the civil service someone is corrupt if you go to the banks for instance we're talking about the banks 
someone is corrupt. You're seeing people um, buying money for their POS business. Meanwhile, a common person like me, I would go to the bank and they would tell me there is no cash. Or maybe all I can withdraw is about ten to 20,000 naira. But you're seeing this bulk of money being given to people who do who change money in parties when Meats. they need to spray mint notes. Yeah. So you see corruption here as well. You see corruption in different levels from the government officials everywhere to the police. How do we start to have those checks and balances for us to be able to drive corruption out? You've talked about leadership and you're saying it has to start from the top. You cannot just talk the talk. You have to, you know, work the work as well. So now we've established the fact that leadership is quite important. So even from the president to the chief of staff to the vice president, everybody that is in a leadership position should try as much as possible to you know, eradicate corruption, but we need key strategies that people can take. And I can check myself, I can check the next person, I can check Yam Gold if he's being corrupt and say, okay, we're doing this check and balances to ensure that we're driving corruption out and just eradicate it totally. Yeah, you see, uh, you see most uh, failing families in our society, the blame stops, out, uh, uh, the bulk is on the, on the leader of the house, the man. Demand. Because if you mismanage your family, the home will scatter. Mm. Now, if you are an irresponsible father and irresponsible husband, you do you can't expect to raise responsible children. The same way, throughout history, all the countries of the nations that have failed, everything boils down to leadership. You see, we cannot have forced tokenism in this, in this country again. It's not about you as an individual. It's not about me. As much as it's our responsibility that change this change or whatever we want to do should start with you and me, it's also, we need to look at the, the society tends to look at the leadership. Society tends to follow the leadership. Society tends to, to, to learn from leadership. Society tends to, to, to copy leadership steps. So if the body, if the focal and the body languages of the leader is right, you know, wherever it goes, people go. That is what happens. So that is why I said our, you know, it's not our strategies. It is the, strate the, strate the first strategy is to get our leadership improvement right in this country. By a way of uh, getting the, the people, we have not been able to be lucky to have empathetic leaders in this country. Mm. Majority of Nigeria, show me one, one former president, show me one go former governor in this country that uh, uh, has not amassed more than the normal uh, salaries and allowances that they have gotten. The mm. properties they have amassed, the, the humongous financial, you know, uh, enable, enablement that they have given to themselves, and rest of that. Why are people so desperate to go into, into governance? It is because there's an open commission. Let's even look at what is happening now. One ministry, just one ministry, one ministry. See what is what is happening. Yeah. Billions of naira wasted, frittered away, and then we are we are in, we, uh, uh, only God knows. Time they begin to look at other ministries, we don't know what has happened there. Maybe these ones did not play their game, you know, maybe they are not smart enough. Mm. You know, as a matter of fact, if you look at the whole processes, you see you see that the, 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 the people involved are not so smart at all. So they just I mean, how can somebody say I approve so so thousands of naira for you to fly from Abuja to Kogi? <laughs> a Kogi that has no airport. So they are not, they are not, these ones are not smart groups. So now that one probably will be. Scapegoated, we made a scapegoat and uh, maybe all that, maybe, but I do not see people, other people sitting down, uh, sitting sitting tight and say, oh, no, I, I, I don't want to be involved. Until we have that mentality of fear that, no, I must not put my heart in what belongs to the Nigerian people. We mm. have to use it for, for their benefit. Until we have that fear of God, until we have that empathy as human beings, that's a total disconnect between the Nigerian leadership and the Nigerian people. And that is why you will see that in the midst of hunger, you, you will see a, uh, a, 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 first, a first lady hosting all people, and then you hear them spend probably 500 million or 1 billion naira on, on food alone one night. I mean, and then we are hearing that uh, the, uh, uh, there's approval of 3.7 billion to buy new vehicles for the president, or two something billion to buy new vehicles for the president. A yacht, even a yacht as not well. in this type of economy you do that kind of thing. It is not in this type of economy. So it is also a corruption where you spend and earn money on, on luxury. And let me tell you, like the Yoruba people will say, it is only a fool that borrows money 
to bury a prostitute for the burial ceremonies of a prostitute. And when you take hard earned money, borrowed money, Nigeria is heavily indebted to the tune of trillions, both locally and internationally. And then you get such money and you are wasting it on luxury. It, it is equivalent to it is helping to borrow your money to bury a prostitute. It's not your wife, oh, it's a public public liability company for everybody. So you now want went to, to, to get indebted to bury a prostitute. That is what is tantamount to where well, you are getting money. Look, Nigerians need a lot they look at the palliatives that they are promised that has not come. I, I'm looking forward to a day that the president will announce that they palliative for all the students in the higher institution. For instance, give them the kind of moratorium, say no student will pay tuition for the next three years. That is direct palliative. Everybody will plus him. Everybody will appreciate that. Every parent, people who have four or five uh, kids in the higher institution, it, oh, it's not a party. It is not a party. You have to struggle to pay for the tuition, for the accommodation, for the transportation, for the feeding, especially the ones that are ladies. You know, you you have spent five times the amount you spend on a boy on a girl. Sure. You know? Sure. So that is it. You have to invest in their future, you have to invest in their present. We don't want them to become part of the wasted generation. That is why every parent must play their part. So because it is the failure from home that also gets into the society and gets into governance. Because when you have responsible men who, who just want to bear children without caring about their feeding, their, their welfare, their education, their future, their present, they don't care. And some, pardon me, but and some, I don't know, retarded women will sit with, 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 in such marriages. And it is that, it is the failure at home that leads to the failure in government. We need to have a system that holds our leaders, including heads of corporate agencies, government agencies rest accountable. That must be transparent, that transparent financial regimen that is that makes it possible for Nigeria to track the expenses of government. That is one strategy that should work for us. I want to be able to know, for, the, for instance, Federal Inland Revenue Service, what, what came in last week? Well, well, how are you dispensing? How are you dispensing it? Now we are hearing that some government agencies we, 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 we earn money and they will not pay it to government into, into government coffers. That is outright robbery. Outright robbery. You understand? So, we, Nigeria needs a total overhaul, total rehabilitation, total rehabilitation, social well, political rehabilitation. Well, we've had, we've, we continue, we are continuing. we've had an NNPC that did not remit any money to the Federation account for years, even though now they're posting some some profits and all that and, but they've been um, said that even the world yeah, bank has said they are not transparent they are they're not they're not they're not even they were not even producing anything but they were taking a chunk of our budget we've had a jakuta steel mill that has not um, worked for 40 or more years and all that but now the issue is it's like the chicken and the, the, the egg which mm. one comes first we, you just made a statement that it is what is obtainable in the family that uh, comes to the uh, leadership position uh, later on in life. So when we start this orientation uh, on the Nigerian psyche, as it were, where do we begin? Do we begin in the home? Because even in the home now, we're seeing parents buying laptops for their children to do Yahoo, hmm. <laughs> because everybody just wants their children to blow, no matter what. We've, matter seen, we've seen different role models, uh, different from what we used to have in those days, where your parents would be pointing you at some people who are useful people in the society. Trendy they late. just want you to make money and all that. You get into politics and everybody is expecting you to steal, otherwise you're not a good politician because it's, they're not concerned about the laws that you should make for them or the policies that should come so that their lives will be better. They're just concerned about the fact that at Christmas we share rice and yes, we no, share... Yes, the Lord has done it for me. Yeah. So all, where do we start this orientation from? Because we need to have this Nigerian dream, this Nigerian project uh, shown or for our country, maybe in the next 20 years, 50 years, and all that. But where do we start the orientation from? You see, one of the things that baffles me is that, um, you know, Nigeria, we... I want to be able to take your question in a holistic manner. Okay. Uh, Nigeria will go abroad, will go and borrow $100 billion. But at home, you have a single individual who has stolen 600 billion naira, the former captain general of the federation, if you remember. Mm. Now, the case is still on. And in typical Nigeria, 
I think while the case was still going on, I think the man was giving a CTC title in Kano also, you know. And then they is still in court, you know, defending a corruption case. That is the kind, look at that, look at that, look at that kind of insult to the sensibility of Nigerians. You know, that's why I said, you see, hopefully, hopefully, because the only way we can fix this thing is if you fix our leadership. Hopefully, God will help us to get somebody to that as well, who will have the fear of God, who will have the patriotic vafo to be able to re-engineer this country. We need somebody, we need a social engineer who will totally re-engineer this country. Socially, economically, politically, culturally, in every, morally, in every area. Somebody who really has a purpose, not just to become president, but to become a good president, to run the, to run the country well. We will need somebody who will come, who will come and create a revolution in our men's mindset. Nigerians are hardworking. You cannot accuse us of being lazy. Nigerians are extremely hardworking, extremely hardworking. By 3.30 a.m., you see people on the road, you know, you call for, uh, in, uh, for just open your portal and say that, oh, we are recruiting people in our, in our organization. We need five people. You are going to see, you are going to get five million graduates. They will, they will troop, they will overrun your, 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 your office. Looking for work. Nigerians want to work, but they don't have the tools to work with. They don't have a system that guarantees provision, you know, provision of uh, of employment. You know, the unemployed, the, the uh, so many unemployed graduates. Of course, unfortunately, there are also unemployable graduates too. Because I've, I've interviewed the couple, and uh, you begin to wonder what's happening, what's happening to our academic educational system. But of course, we are beginning to discover what is happening to our by all these uh, fake degrees, fake schools, fake professors all over the place. So what, what do you expect? So the number one thing is for us as a people to target the leadership. Hopefully, uh, in 2027, hopefully, there will be a kind of uh, a movement that will be able to identify a delinquent of Nigeria, the Nazi Mandela of Nigeria, and Captain Somo Thomas Ankara of Nigeria, who will be able to get, oh, I wish that somebody like uh, Mongalu, Mongalu had succeeded. In, in, in changing the, the, the trajectory of things. If you have succeeded in winning governance, I don't believe we'll be in the state that we are. Somebody like Professor Mogalu, especially. You know, somebody like Shogure, somebody like Bayo Adewale of the STP. These are the people. Go and read their manifestos. Go and read their, go and read their history. Go and see how they made their money. Go and see how they, they gave the status that they have today. So these are not, these are not a uh, money miss road overnight, uh, millionaires or billionaires. These are people that you can track out the, the roads to the level that they are today. They have you can see that they don't have any more baggage. These are the people, these are the kind of people that are, we want in this in this country. That yes. will be able to change the way, the dimension of things that uh, the way we are going. We cannot continue like this and hope to get to the promised land. We cannot continue like this and, and hope to have a society that you and me can be proud of. We, and we need to get it right. We need to get it right. And like I said, we don't have the luxury of time. For methodical, systemic, something that we want to do something today, uh, we, it, it may be painful now, but it will be comfortable tomorrow. No, 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 that can't, that doesn't work. They told us that austerity measure will work in the in the 80s. It did not work. People were suffering during the austerity. Post austerity, we are still suffering. Later, they brought the social uh, adjustment I program. They say, oh, you are suffering now. You will enjoy it later. We didn't, we didn't enjoy anything. Later, they brought all manner of things. This one that they have said subsidy removal is a pain today that we. Give us comfort tomorrow. I don't have any hope of, uh, on that. So we don't want a situation where the renew hope agenda of the president will become a crash hope for all of us as a people. We need to change. The president has been saying and advocating for a change of mindset. It should start from us all. It should start with him. Change of mindset. Let him. Let us see him sitting up and saying, "Look, yeah." He has cut. He has cut some things. Say that uh, entourage is cutting. Is cutting a uh, uh, convoy. Is cutting people are traveling yeah. out. And, uh, fine. That we need more of that. We need more of that. We need examples. And we need for this anti-corruption movement. If it's, if it is if it's going to be a movement from a drive to a movement, we want it to graduate from the, this drive to a movement and to proactive actions. All, all over all over the place. We need openness in the fight against corruption and we need a sample.
Okay. We need people to lead by example. We need right. governors to lead by example. We need to. We need the president to lead. Let him lead us. Let him lead us. Let him prove his critics wrong. That is able to run this country not only efficiently and effectively, but also with transparency. Yeah. And integrity. Okay. Uh, well, um, we do hope that our Nigeria of the Nigeria of our dreams will come in our lifetime. That's all we're saying. Uh, in the media, uh, and especially in Plus TV, we'll continue to say what we feel uh, is going well or going wrong in Nigeria. So everybody, like your you station, have said... Your station, Plus TV Africa, has been one of the emerging powerhouse of public interest programs and professionalism. Thank you guys you are doing much. tremendously well. Thank you uh, I will not be surprised in the next one, two years that you guys, like the soul Nigeria, if you blow... In a positive manner. Now. <laughs> yeah, thank so, you so much. You are doing very well. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Comrade Mark Adebayo, for coming on our show this morning. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you join us. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank okay. You. okay, we've been talking with Comrade Mark Adebayo, spokesperson coalition of United Political Parties, and we were looking at the fact that the CBN has sacked the boards of Union, Titan, Keystone, and Polaris banks uh, in its bid to fight corruption. And we do hope that. Uh, these things will continue and we will see a positive change in Nigeria. Apart mm -hmm. from the positive change, we hope that there will be food on our tables as mm -hmm. well so mm -hmm. that we, we feed well. That's the fundamental yeah. thing. You feed yeah. well, then you, you have where to sleep. You have where to sleep and you have, have clothes, clothes on, on your, your body. Back. That's the, bed, the bedrock of everything mm -hmm. uh, that we are looking for. Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, hard. It's not that hard. It's not that. I, I mean, I think that if our leaders want to lead us well, lead us right, and I feel like I'm highlighting a song here, yeah. <laughs> but they can. They, they can actually do it. They, it's yeah. just making up their minds and saying, I'm going there to ensure that I do a good job and excellent work and everything is for the growth of Nigeria. And what our guest said, I mean, I had to write a lot. I mean, he talked about proactive action, openness and transparency, leadership, transparent financial regimen. We don't have that in Nigeria. We don't. And, you know, those are the things that we need to start to do for us to see a better Nigeria. Because we can only say, oh, we are hoping, we're hoping. Um, I think one of our guests said last week, I was like, oh, it's the same prayer that we keep praying over mm -hmm. and over again. We're hoping for a better Nigeria. But until we start to put, you know, those actions in place, until we start to do the right thing, we can never get there. And I'm hoping that, you know, everybody is just pulling their weights and, you know, putting in their quota to ensuring that we have a better Nigeria. Before now, it used to be, the, the, the quote used to be that a good name is better than wealth. Mm. Uh, I don't know how many people would even think about that now. Mm. They will ask you, now, good name will go talk. Mm. Well when comes when we all begin to think about legacy, we, we're the way we are right now because we don't think about legacy. We don't think about what name we're going to leave because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, if your name is soiled, it is soiled. And that's the only thing we remember about you. Yeah. Even, even if you build hospitals in every house, if you have a bad name, uh, they, will still, they will still... That's what they'll remember, they remember even before the, the hospitals name. that yeah. you built. Is it not our money he used? Mm -hmm. it, maybe he had an agenda. He was taking blood from the mm -hmm. hospital and doing his ritual exactly. and all that. Just have a good name. That's what posterity remembers you by. Yeah. And that, that is what will make our society great. We do hope that it will start with you because I know it has started with me. I do the good thing I can do. Yeah, with the rest in your own of little corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... We thank you for being a part of our show this morning. Let's thank do it you. again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Lagaji. My name is Rume Fulton. Have a good day.